Mr. Speaker, may I take questions five and six together? Yes, please. Under the MOH pilot for pre-implantation genetic screening, PGS, the intended objective is to improve in vitro fertilization, IVF success rates leading to live births for specific groups of women who have an increased risk for embryos with chromosomal abnormalities. Any woman who fulfills one of the following clinical criteria is eligible for PGS. One, 35 years and above, regardless of prognosis. Two, suffered two or more recurrent implantation failures. Or three, experienced two or more pregnancy losses. These eligibility criteria are not set arbitrarily, but developed with reference to available international evidence and aligned with clinical practices in overseas assisted reproduction centres. PGS is a technically complex procedure which carries potential risks, including damage to the embryos during the biopsy with impact on their subsequent development, and should be reserved for women who fulfil the eligibility criteria to undergo <coughs> the procedure. The MOH provides substantial funding for the pre-implantation genetic screening pilot program. It has extended $1.7 million in funding to support the manpower and operations of the PGS laboratory and half of the PGS consumables costs. As a result, participating patients are charged only the remaining costs of the PGS consumables, which average about $1,100 per test, as well as the cost of the embryo biopsy to remove cells for PGS testing, which ranges from $2,500 to $4,500. PGS is performed together with IVF. For IVF, patients can for IVF, patients can receive government support through the Assisted Reproduction Technology Co-Funding Scheme, as well as TAP on their Medisafe. A total of 367 patients were recruited for the PGS study, more than the targeted 300 patients. MOH will continue to assess the clinical effectiveness of PGS, including looking at overseas data, collecting more data from cases here in Singapore. MOH will also explore options for co-sharing of costs of PGS for patients who are keen to be part of the study but have affordability concerns. If PGS is included as a mainstream healthcare service, it will then be assessed for means-tested subsidies. Mr. Lewison. Thank you, sir. I, I thank uh, Palsek for the reply. I understand that, as she mentioned, over 300 people enrolled for PGS, but only about 100 actually did PGS. So could I ask MOH what are the main reasons why people didn't proceed with PGS? And two, uh, what steps MOH is taking to increase the enrollment of PGS and uh, decrease the, the dropout rate? And third, really, I really hope uh, uh, the feedback on the ground is that there is a cost issue. So I hope MOH can look into this and really subsidize the, fully subsidize this so that more people can participate in this trial and hopefully we can then nationalize it to benefit more people. Thank you. I thank member for the question. The high attrition rate um, of about 71.7% of enrolled subjects before reaching the stage of embryo biopsy and PGS testing indeed remains a challenge. Prior to the start of the pilot, the evaluation team had determined that the target of uh, 300 patients with PGS testing would be needed to, be, uh, to achieve statistical significance. Um, I would, as of, three, as of 30, 30th September 2020, a total of, 200 and, as mentioned earlier, 267 patients were enrolled, but only 104 had embryo biopsies performed. Almost half of the patients changed their minds after the ovarian stimulation and fertilization stage and proceeded with embryo transfer directly without performing PGS or decided to freeze their embryos instead. Other patients did not proceed with a biopsy due to medical reasons, such as poor quality of the blastocysts or embryo uh, arrest. And um, of these 69 patients with euploid um, embryos, um, 60 underwent embryo transfers. This led to 31 pregnancies with 15 live births, 8 miscarriages, and 8 ongoing pregnancies. 
So as the member rightly pointed out, we do need a bit more data to fully study this, to understand its clinical, clinical effectiveness. MOH is doing its best to try and assist and support um, as many patients as possible to go through this process, and this remains something that we will continue to review. Um, in as far as the cost is concerned, this is something that um, we understand is a challenge uh, for the patients who um, really need support for this. We will look into this matter, but as it is at the moment, there, are, there is limited and inconclusive evidence on the clinical effectiveness, and we do need to proceed carefully with this process because there are also um, impact on the embryo. There's a low risk, but there is still risk to the embryo, and we do need to make sure that the right people proceed for this uh, procedure.